Hey guys, Alan here, Solid Rock Bible Class. Hey, thanks for being with me. Hey, we are going to be continuing that study we started last week. We're, we started talking about cults last week, but as I mentioned also, we're really not going to be talking about them yet. What we're really gonna be talking about is we're going to be talking about our core beliefs, what we believe, why we believe it, because it's important to know what we believe, and that's what we base false doctrine on. That's what we, that's what we can base false teaching on, is when it goes against our core beliefs. So last week we talked about salvation. This week we're going to talk about our authority here. Um, the authority that we have. Where does the authority we have come from? Uh, we're going to look at this foundational thing that says, why do we believe really in the Bible? Do we really believe it's inspired by God? I do. I hope you do. You know, we're looking for some stability in our life. And we must have that stability. We have to have something we can go back to, we can study, we can look at, and know this is the truth. It's kind of like a road map that directs us. And that's what the Bible is. It's a road map that directs us. It's kind of like our GPS. But uh, as we look at it, we have to realize that we have to accept God's word as the authority here. And as we do that, we also have to realize that Jesus is that authority and we need to be going by what Jesus Christ has to say. We have to be going by Jesus as being our Lord and our Savior. Then the teachings that he has, we need to realize those are authentic. And those are the teachings we need to follow. You know, when God's word is my authority, it can change the direction of my heart. It can change the direction of my mind. It can change the direction of my feet. You know, it's, it's God offering the satisfaction, you know, my ever longing satisfaction. In the Bible, we find a direction in our lives. We find comfort in times of distress and a remarkable love story of our Heavenly Father who loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son for us. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It gives us direction in our lives. It shows us the rewards that we have coming and this beautiful, lasting relationship that we have with God the Father. It offers us peace, it offers us stability. It tells us about our eternal home. Look in the book of 2 Timothy with me, the third chapter, verse 15. And it says, and that from a child hath known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Notice, we have to accept God's word by faith. Notice in verse 16, all scripture is given. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine. That's teaching. For reproof, that's correcting us. For correction, for instruction in righteousness. And then in verse 17, it says that the man of God may be perfect. That's complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All scripture, he says, is profitable. All scripture is correct. You know, Paul makes it, I think, extremely clear when we look into the book of Galatians. But, <clears throat> but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which he have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that that you have received, let him be accursed. We need to base everything that we do on the authority of God's word. 
God's word is either the authority or it's not the authority. It's either inspired or it's not inspired. In 2 Peter, the, the, sec, the first chapter, excuse me, verse 21, it says, For the prophecy came not of old time by the will of man. It didn't come from man. But it says, From holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. It was inspired by God. James let us know that we must take and submit ourselves to God. In verse, uh, in James, the fourth chapter, verses seven and eight, he says, submit yourself therefore to God. That's hard to do, isn't it? Give somebody else control of our life. Submit yourself therefore to God. And then he goes on, he says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. And most time we stop kind of right there and say, if I resist the devil, he'll flee from me. But he goes on in verse eight and he says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You know, God's word, it will clean us up if we adhere to it. If we listen to it, if we preach it, if we teach it, if we follow it, it'll clean our lives up. In Matthew, the fourth chapter, Jesus, he was, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now, what did he do when he was tempted of the devil? What means of control did he have during these temptations? Well, Jesus, he could have chose the time and the place. He could have destroyed Satan. It's possible. Instead, all three occasions that we see here, we see he went back to God's word and he quoted scripture. In doing so, he taught us something. He taught us that we need to rely on the scriptures, that we need to commit them to memory, and that is how that we take and we fight Satan. God's word is my correction. I challenge myself with God's word, and I hope you do also. So how do you know when the Bible is your authority? Think about that for a minute. How do you know when you have accepted the Bible as your authority? It's when it stops you dead in your tracks, when you're about to do something wrong. When something's wrong, It'll just stop you dead in your tracks. In Proverbs, the 14th chapter, verse number 12, realize it says, There's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. See, there is a way that we think is right, but it's not right. It's not how we feel. I have so many people say, well, I just follow what I feel. If you follow what you feel, it'll kill you. I have a video. One of these days, I'll have to get it digitally enhanced so maybe I can take and, and do something with it. Um, it's, on, it's on an old format. But it, it's a really, really good illustration because it was a really good illustration of somebody who thought they were, they were flying an airplane and they, they, they was going by their feelings and they weren't going by their instruments. And it led to total disaster because they went the way they felt. And God's word says there's a way which seems right to us, but it'll kill us. Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word... Have I hidden my heart, or I'm sorry, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word, it's a lamp to my feet. It's something, it shows me where I'm going. It gives me light. Only one step at a time maybe, but it gives me light. It gives me direction. You know, I don't think when we look at God's word, there's any other book out there that's, that's been burned as much as the Bible has been. There's no, 
there's no amount of books out there that have been banned as much as what the Bible has been. Or somebody's tried to defame it as much as the Bible, yet it continues to rise out of the ashes. It has for all these thousands of years. And in doing so, it's led people to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, following God. And it's going to continue doing that. The Bible assures us that his word is not going to fail until he comes back. But let's go back and let's look at some other things. The Bible in archaeology. Because we've been talking about the scriptures and what the scriptures say. But when we look back in the Bible, we look at, or when we look at archaeology, they found more than 24,000 whole or partial manuscripts. And that they exist today. Uh, the amazing thing is the unity that all of those find. These 24,000 documents, they all have unity to them. They were so well preserved, so well copied and translated to us. A prominent uh, authority in the New Testament took and he, he said something. He said, no fundamental doctrine of the Christian faith rests on a disputed reading, talking about all of these manuscripts. I'm sure that you've heard about the, the Dead Sea Scrolls. They found them in 1948, and I'm not going into the story about how they were found or, or any of that nature at this particular point, but included in there was a copy of the book of Isaiah. And these scrolls, these are over a thousand years older than anything else that they had found previous to this. And the amazing thing is only one word in Isaiah 53 was questioned and it didn't change the meaning of the sentence in any way there was total unity there in the biblical writings the Bible speaks of actual places it talks about actual people that can be historically proven and verified archaeologists have been able to find so much and when they've questioned the Bible and what it's really said, they found that it held true. Almost every historian, the Bible has, has, has been confirmed by archeologists out there over and over again in what they have found. These deeper insights, these deeper meanings on some of the artifacts that's been found. So what are the rewards for us for choosing the Bible as our book of practice, something we apply to our lives and we practice it. What does the Bible offer to us? If we take and we submit to the Bible as our authority, it can bring us peace, it can bring us satisfaction, it'll bring us hope, it'll give us this confidence. You know, I, one of the things that is the most disturbing to people many times is the fact that they feel like they don't have any hope but the bible gives us hope and that's not and it and it, it it lets us know that even though we've messed up it's not too late for us no matter how many mistakes we've made it offers us help god's word is our help you can take and you can find wisdom in it you can find knowledge in it you know, we find, sometimes I think we find ourselves in it. It has the answers to the questions that we need. Where do I turn? What do I do? The answers are there. It offers us healing. I'm not talking necessarily about just physical healing, but yes, I mean, I do believe that you can pray and God will heal us. But it helps us through our hurts and our problems, and every single one of us have those hurts and those problems. Look into the book of Psalms, the 23rd division. Everybody knows Psalms 23, and I'm gonna pick it up and read verses three, four, and five. He says, he restoreth 
my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for my name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. That's some great healing he offers to us when we take and we submit to God, his will, his word as our authority of faith and practice. The Bible gives us happiness. We can find happiness in God's word. It will give us the blueprint for happiness. We can look in the, again in the book of Psalms in the first division, verses one and two. Blessed or happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Notice the happy person, the blessed person is the one that delights himself in God's law and thinks about it continually. Also, the Bible, it gives us that hope of heaven. The grave is not it. The grave is not our finishing, our, our finishing to the play here. It's not, it's not our ending. The Bible offers us heaven, eternal life in heaven. The Bible is where we find out about our eternal home. You know, we can learn about heaven, what it's like. And we can even more importantly learn what it takes for us to get there. It removes that fear of the unknown from us. Only people who are totally submitted to God's word can know this and can feel this. We have to be submitted to the scriptures to know this peace I'm talking about. In 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verses nine and 10. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed, uh, <clears throat> revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit <clears throat> searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Notice he says, but it is written, I have not seen, ear hath not even heard. It hasn't even entered into our minds the things that God has prepared for us. That's, that's really some, some great thoughts as we think about heaven and what he's prepared for us. God's word, it takes and unlocks these secrets. It unlocks heaven for us. The Bible, it's the key here the key avenue that God uses to take and it speak to speak to us, it continues to answer the problems we have, the encounters that we have in life, the choices that we have. If we just put our faith in God's word. So the Bible must be our authority. Now as we start talking later about the cults, the big thing we're going to find is many of them will say they believe the Bible, but then they have another book that they hold at the exact same level as the Bible. They say it's inspired, yet it's written by men that take and actually try to explain away many things that's in the scriptures. It's not important what people say about the Bible. It's important what the Bible says. And if we have to take and have an authority, it's what the Bible says and not what some other book says. And when we do that, that's when we have the hope of heaven, 
heaven. And that's when we have happiness in our life. That's when we have healing in our life. That's when the Bible helps us. When we take and submit to God's word as our authority of faith and practice. This is Alan, and we will start on a, on a different subject here about core doctrine next week.